in the boardroom, a tough choice for Sir Alan. On this occasion, let me tell you, this is a very close run thing. And I am having to rely upon the balance of what the experts have told me, yeah? And my conclusion is that the girl's product wins. <laughs> Now the boys are in his firing line. Yes. You five gentlemen, go and step out there for a while, have a chat amongst yourself. You'll be coming back in here. Eventually, one of you will be fired, OK? Come on, boys. Well, a close call, really, because um, it was all down to having to decide upon the viability of the uh, product in the end. Both quite interesting products and both teams uh, passionate about the fact that they've come up with the best one. I, I absolutely understand the maths, but I think you were not as enthusiastic, clearly, as I would have been about the belt. How do you kick it off with no budget? And if it, it, it actually has to start off as a craze. Mm. It can't just build up to one, because if somebody's going to buy two things in a sealed packet and they can't swap it with anybody because nobody else has got one, they're not going to be very happy, are they? Well, we'll have to bring them all back in here and go through stuff in far more detail, as usual. Uh, the team leader will then have to pick two people who he wants to bring back into the boardroom with him. And regretfully, although these five chaps have really been enthusiastic about this task and have worked very, very hard, one of them will be fired. ready for you now. <clears throat> yeah, boys, yeah. No, but solidarity. Solidarity sticks okay. together. <sighs> Gentlemen, you've uh, had a little time to chat amongst yourselves. Um, I, I guess you're disappointed in the decision that's been made. I know you was highly enthusiastic about your product. Don't get me wrong, the girls thing, there's no bloody rocket science, right? But I had to make a decision on what was viable, what would sell. What if I made 5,000 of them tomorrow, put them in a shop, would they sell, would they make some money? And they will. Gerald, did you do any market research into your kind of size of the market? No. No. OK. The market research was, was, was drilled down to one kid in a shop somewhere. No, when we went to the shop, we were given the name by a kid, name, and yeah. further reinforced... The name the by the kid in the shop. Yeah, and we think it's a good name still. I think that's a genius thing. I'm, I'm really proud of them doing that. I think it's fabulous that the fact yeah, that I, the kid I am, came I'm up proud of the fact that well, we were versatile enough that... to switch to that Do you know and the enjoy name? Can I just say, the name Pokemon came from a kid in Japan. You know that? They were calling it something else initially. And Pokemon is a Japanese Romanji version of saying mm. Pocket Monster. came yeah. from a kid. Right. Can't argue with that. But we don't think it failed. We didn't get uh, not to win this task because of the name, did we, Sean? Well. No, no, it's because your business model doesn't work. Simple as that. We you think know. it does. You know where we think you're wrong? Well, you're looking me, at... Wait, hold on. You're still delusioned in some way or other. You think... It's a very easy thing to say, I think it does. You know, mm. it's a bit like well, when someone... It's a very easy thing to say, I think it doesn't. No, no, I've given you the reasons why it doesn't. I haven't heard one credible reason because from you at all as to where it works. Right, because, because it's a product. Kids that have seen it love it. It's a sexy product. They like it. That people like collecting characters, that's proven down the years. And what we have done is produce something that they can actually show it off to their friends. Rather than hide it in a drawer, they can wear it on a belt as a fashion accessory. Gok knows everything about fashion, and he thinks that kids would like to wear it as a fashion accessory. I'd rather listen to somebody like Gok than some pen pusher, bean counter, sitting there saying, oh, well, you can't do that because the margin's here, and this costs that, and that's not what it, it's about. Retailing is about gut instinct looking at something and thinking if it's going to sell. If it sells, then you find a way of selling it at a profit, and that's what we would have done. Mm, no, you wouldn't. Now, the target market for this age group is 700,000 people. 
Now, in my heyday, I managed to achieve, at peak, 23% market share. That's an impressive that's penetration. Big. Very, very big. So just, just giving you, let, let's just say 10% market share of 700,000. You've got to start thinking big. If you get a hotline and something that they all want because their friends have got it and they want to swap... I'm going to go a stage further. you got half the bloody market. Wow. 350,000 people. I've given you 350,000 people. I told people. you we do well. If you've only got 350,000 people, you can't bang your head up against the wall. You any, can't say you're going to sell okay. 10 million, any, can you? Any account of Gerald, table. Gerald, let, let, let's not make it my argument. This is the gurus. The one area where I think you have missed the trick, if you don't mind me saying so, is you're looking at those figures and you're saying, these will sell, I'll give you 50% of the market, which is very generous of you. Okay, and, and they'll and sell in, and impractical. And impractical. Say you have thirty percent, which I think is probably reachable. Okay, and you're saying they're going to buy two each. They're not going to buy two each. I don't know a single kid who collects things who only has two of it. I don't know one who's only got ten of it. These kind of figures. Everyone I know has twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty. Okay, there's something like three hundred different Pokemon characters out there. Now I know that's an established brand with the might of a huge company behind it. But even so, we know full well that no kid who actually gets given one of these is going to want to stop or allow their parents to stop at just two toys. They're going to keep going on. So I think you have underestimated, and the people who advise you have underestimated. Jonathan, the hook you you, the you got kids, right? Yeah. You've got kids, and your kids have been through the phase of collecting something in their lifetime. Absolutely. Uh, so we're fortunate here in this room here that perhaps we've got a little bit more money, disposable income, than the average punters Absolutely. out there, right? And I'll tell you what I would know a lot of ordinary people would say at the moment. You are not wasting your bloody money collecting another load of things. I've got this other pile of toot under your bed already that you collected the last time when I was running around doing this and doing yeah. that. You've got your Tamaguchi egg sitting in a drawer somewhere doing something else. I'm not letting you do it. So, Alan, kids grow up. And the ones who bought the Pokemon... These are five to eight-year-olds. Yeah. Well, the five-year-old... OK, the seven-year-old becomes nine. And when he's nine, the drawer full of toot gets given away, or if they're sensible, they save them and sell them on eBay in 20 years' time. Birthdays come around. They're looking for the present. new thing. The world hasn't come to an end. The people will still go out right. and buy toys. We're getting nowhere here. I will certainly here. spend We're my money on this rather than a, a suit with Velcro on it for yes, my kids in this credit crunch time. <laughs> well, they're not going to wear more we're, than We're once. getting nowhere here really fast because none of you are accepting the fact that the business Well, we disagree with you and we believe we can make money with this. Fair enough to disagree with me, but we you know, unfortunately, I've got to actually um, make a decision as to which one of you um, is culpable for this. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I think the business model uh, is wrong. You think it's right. Uh, we'll find that out another day. Do you know what? I think, if I'm really honest, I think we're just all a bit gutted because, you know, we've worked our asses off, if I'm really yeah. honest. We, and all of us have put so much into it. And I've never met a bunch of people that have put so much of their heart and their brains and their experience and their enthusiasm into something they don't know actually that much about. And that's what it is. It's a bit of a shock because we're all gutted, because we want to raise money for comment relief. And of course, we've got a product there we all love. I'm getting nowhere fast here. Gerald, uh, of all your troops, who um, perhaps didn't give you the full support? Because you've got to bring two people back into this boardroom. Well, I think that everybody gave me an enormous amount of support. I think that... Um, It's different. I think Jonathan performed extremely well. I think got, uh, you actually designed the product or came up with the idea for the product, and I, which I still believe is a great product. But I think Jonathan and, and, and Gott perhaps shouldn't come back into the room. OK. Well, gentlemen, let me take this opportunity to thank you once again for your tremendous contribution uh, in this task. I may be wrong, we will see. Time will tell. Solidarity, brothers. Okay. See I love this new luck as well, Margaret, I have to say. It's really, really working. See you guys. Love you. Oh dear. Okay. See you later, guys. Love you. Oh dear. How did it come to this, Jack? <laughs> okay, gentlemen, um, it's now down to the last three of you. Would you mind stepping outside? Uh, Margaret, Nick and I will have a, a final chat. We'll come back in this boardroom and one of you will be fired.
finally. Yesterday saw Alan Carr's team lose in the mighty celebrity oh, Don't hate bringing it up. <laughs> Alan, Jack D and Gerald Ratner have all been called back into the boardroom by Sir Alan. Let's now find out who gets fired. It's The Apprentice Boardroom 2. Good luck, Alan. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, they're just being belligerent. They just don't want to see uh, that, that, that they've made an error. And you can't argue with people like that who just don't want to see it. It's as simple as that. I think it was right not to bring Gok back into the boardroom because he had a lot of design input. Yeah. In that room, he was responsible for that really? room. It was, that was fantastic. Yeah, that was very good. Yeah, that was very good. Uh, and Jonathan Ross, obviously, he did give a good presentation uh, last night. He seemed to kind of run the team more than anything else. You, he enthused them all to such an extent that it was a, a great experience for them all. Yeah, so full marks to him. He never, he never slackened off for a minute. Mm. So we shall see. We'll have to um, call them back in and see which one of them is going to be fired. It's been very difficult because they are strong personalities and strong characters. Um, but I feel that I've been a little bit of a foil to, to the others. I can't say that I've been a good project manager, no. But I think I've been a reasonable one. Failure is one of those things that I take it on the chin when it comes and, um, and store it up inside and then it just sort of eats and eats away at me until I become so unbearably depressed I have to have medication. <laughs> I've never had, like, you're fired, like Sir Alan does. I just get, maybe, Alan, it's best if you don't come back on Monday. <laughs> is that still firing? Probably is, isn't it? Hello? Yes, can you send the three of them in, please? Yes, yeah, Sir Alan. Sir Alan will see you now. I'm nervous. nervous. Oh dear. Right, gentlemen, uh, this is the kind of home run of, as they call it, on this uh, comic relief, Does Apprentice. We are all in violent disagreement about my decision. Tell me something, Jack, why shouldn't I fire you for this task? Um, I, I, I put everything I had into it, um, and if you give me another chance, I won't let you down. I, Thank you, thank you, Margaret. I'm trying to be serious here for a second. I, I don't think you should fire any of us. I think you should fire Nick. He did nothing. He, he acted as if he wasn't even in the team, to be honest. And he borrowed money off me, which I haven't had back. And uh, most of the time he's distracting because he just said, can we go for a drink now? And I said, no, Nick, we've got, you know, we've got work to do, so... That's the first time I've heard something like that, accusations against my, one of my advisors. Trick. It well, is, and that shows a person's character, doesn't it, really? How low they would stoop, really. It's got down to this. If you think about it. And, I, I have got that side to Gerald, me. as the business um, man of the group, you know, ultimately, the leader should be responsible, shouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, I take full responsibility. If you want to fire me, fire me. But oh, I don't think... No, that I, that's no attitude. <laughs> well, I don't actually I think... I think we did a good job. And, uh, you know, as the team leader, I'm responsible for that. I know we lost, but... I still think that it was a good product. I can't understand why you can't give me the benefit of doubt of actually saying that, having spoken to the people whose industry this is in, this ain't a runner. Well, I had people coming up to me last night saying that it was a fantastic product and they thought it would sell. I, I've, I've had an idea, and this might be uh, helpful at this point, Sir Alan, if I may. Um, I, I don't know if you watch X Factor ever. Um, on a couple of occasions, Simon Cowell 
um, as uh, after he's said no to someone in, in audition, has said, you know what, he says to Cheryl, usually, or Danny and, and Louis, he turns to them and says, I think I've made a mistake. And they, and they, they agree and they run off and they get the person back. And Who should I, I get I feel back? it's not too late now. I can't get anybody back. Yes, can I? we could arrange that. Get the girls back, fire them, mm. tell them their product's rubbish, mm. get us back and say, you've won. Well, with the, um, what's it, shit stick, whatever it's called, it was like... You know, it was laughable. People were howling. It's, it's a highly flammable play suit. You could get stuck to the carpet and not be able to leave the house. Mm -hmm. It's a serious point. It's a serious mm -hmm. point, Nick. This well, is yeah. what I've been up against, is that this, this kind of thing. But it, you have to think about that as well. The health and safety implications of stuck stick and it was like are terrible. One size, terrifying. Fits, one size fits all. That's never been the case. If you, it, when you get socks like that, that doesn't work. Well, they do. I mean, they stretch it. Totally, you get half the, you half the heel right up your stretch leg. Stretch your imagination a little bit. And anyway, can I, say, I saw Carol's gross margins in that leotard. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. Well, you shouldn't have been looking. Well, I couldn't help it. I was drawn to it. There was a piece of Velcro over it. So, have you told me why I shouldn't fire you, Alan? Well, I'm an all-rounder. I can lay tablecloths. I can rap. <laughs> no one could rap like me. You know, honestly, a lot of people were saying that that jingle was ringing in their ears long after the advert had finished. <laughs> there were quite a lot of people from the music industry who came up to Alan after. They want to rent their license out also, didn't There's they? a few people with tinnitus so, who said thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jonathan and Gok, they were brilliant. Jonathan's the ideas man and Gok's like the design. What did you actually do then, would you think? I supplied them with tea and coffee when they wanted it. <laughs> Bit of a runner then, really. I was like, a, 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 listen, I'm not going to slag myself off, but sometimes you need someone there to G everyone up. Just, you know, be like, come on everyone, let's all pull together. And that's my skill. Right. I can't mince up and down a fancy dress shop picking out fairy costumes. I like to get down and dirty. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, the last time there was three wise men like you in the place, right, so they all came from the East. Someone special was born. And so they knew born, they were onto a good thing, let's face yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, all right, gentlemen, it's a very difficult decision I've got to make because I have the three wise men coming from the East here that can't see anything wrong, can't see they've done anything wrong. Because of the um, actual process here, I've got to decide which one is going. I would say that, uh, in my opinion, that the responsibility for the failure of this task, if you like, the reason why this product wasn't chosen, lies firmly with the team leader, who, let's be fair, is a respected businessman, has run lots of businesses, uh, built businesses up in the past, and perhaps got carried away with some of the other people's ideas. I'm struggling to understand what um, you also did, uh, Jack, uh, other than being, you know, miserable. And so what I'm going to do is very simple. You've got Alan, you're a very, very nice fellow and everybody loves you. You've got a miserable team leader sitting next to you who, who, who is totally, um, you know, serious all the time. You've got this miserable bloke over there. I'm going to rescue you to take you away from this nasty environment, this hopeless environment, because, and believe me when I tell you this, I'm doing you a favour. <laughs> Alan, you are fine. Please don't. Please, well, I, I make a lovely cup of tea. I'm doing it for your benefit, young man, really. I don't like you mixing with this lot here. They're deluded. There's something wrong with them. I'm doing it for your own benefit you to make it. sure that I'm sending you out that door, oh. start a new life. Oh, okay. Do you understand what I mean? As long as you're doing it for the right reasons. Of course, that, exactly. You're such a lovely fellow. But oh, unfortunately, I have to say you're fired. That's the, that, that so actually, is the problem. Actually, these two are the losers. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I'm a You've got at last. I'm You've a got winner. It. Yeah. yeah. I'm That's like suck stick. Yeah. A winner. Yeah. Alan, thank you so much for all your assistance. Trust me, I've done the right thing for you. Gentlemen, again, let me take this opportunity of thanking you for your, the valuable time that you've given. 
to Comic Relief. Um, it's all in a good cause. Let's hope that the products that have been innovated in this task, yours and the other teams, go somewhere. I'll be delighted if they do. OK? Um, and let's hope they raise lots and lots of money. Thanks again for your time and effort. OK? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. It's very enjoyable. I think you just go. See ya. I've got to get in that taxi all by myself. And there you are, the first time ever. One of the, one of the uh, um, apprentices has actually accused you of bribery and corruption. He promised he wouldn't bring it up, actually. Unbelievable. There you are. Can't trust him. Can't trust him. Should have fired him, maybe, yeah? Yeah. Your taxi's ready for you now. OK, thanks. I feel really gutted and I've got like a lump here and, and I, I've had it like since I got called into the ball and I feel really emotional and strong about it. I mean, it's so bad. I feel like, if I see like a lame animal, I'm just going to break down because, yeah, and everyone was saying, are you all right? You're all right? And I was like, don't eat not in the middle of So, yeah, so, yeah, anyway. But I blame those bloody gurus who talked to uh, Sir Alan. I mean, what are they talking about? They couldn't see a good idea if it came and punched him in the face. <laughs> Please welcome back the gallant loser, Alan Carr! Can I help? I Is there anything I can do? I didn't know men could get camel toe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh dear. Oh no, what do you think? It's lovely. No, 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 down no, there. No, that's me red nose has slipped. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, what size is that for? I, I, it's a five, five to eight. Five to eight. <laughs> it's nice, lovely. Yeah? Mm. It's not just the credit that's been crunched. <laughs> <laughs> now, Red Nose Day happens in every... I feel silly saying this. <laughs> in every corner of the British Isles. So let's take a look at what's been going on all over the UK. 